The stage is set for the utmost tensity of drama. Hauptmann takes the witness stand. Questioned by his own lawyer, Riley, the Bronx carpenter in German accent begins his string of denials. On the night of March the 1st, 1932, <coughs> were you on the grounds of Colonel Lindbergh, Hopewell, New Jersey? I was not. On the night of March the 1st, 1932, <coughs> did you enter the nursery, Colonel Lindbergh? And it takes from that nursery, Charles Lindbergh, Jr. I did not. On the night of March the 1st, 1932, did you leave on the window seat? Colonel Lindbergh, nursery, a note. And I wasn't there at all. You never saw baby Lindbergh in your life, did you? Never saw him. Then the ladder, is it work too crude for a carpenter? You build that ladder. Hauptmann answers with sarcasm. I'm the carpenter. Prosecutor Willens, and mention of John, who got the money in the cemetery. Are you cemetery John that was up in Woodlawn Cemetery? <laughs> Are you the cemetery John that was in the other cemetery? I never was in the cemetery. Never was. The ransom symbols, like the trademark of Krupp munitions. Did you make the signs and drawings of the machinist in Germany? No. None at all? None at all. No blueprints? No, no blueprints. Do you remember the circles in the Krupp, the symbol in the Krupp company, the three interlocking circles? I saw Germany? I saw it. You saw that. But at any rate, when you first went into the market, you weren't so good. And you never built a ladder, that's sure. If you did go to ladder, the first one wouldn't be so good, would it? Defense attorney Riley listens as Hauptmann denies the kidnapping. Not as soon as you got the idea of kidnapping this child, just as is set forth in that letter. I never got an idea to kidnap any child. Then that board from Hauptmann's house with Jaffe's address. <coughs> no. What? No, sir. That is not your handwriting. You take a look at that. You've seen it many times before. <coughs> In spite of that denial, Attorney General Willens has the record to show that Hauptmann had previously admitted that Jaffe's address on the board was in his handwriting. The cross-examination grows more bitter. The most exciting hour in the most exciting of trials. The fiery prosecutor accuses relentlessly while Hauptmann's wife listens. You conceal the truth, he shouts. From District Attorney Foley, the truth, weren't you? You conceal the truth from Inspector Hauptmann? You conceal the truth from the police? You conceal the truth from the Supreme Court Justice? You can see the truth about your wife. You can see the truth about the board. You can see the truth about everything in this case, haven't you? No, sir. Yeah. No, sir. Lynn, were they innocents or guilt? <laughs> he was crouching down under the hedge. And I said, come on, stand up, my young man. I have the money here. I took the money and placed it on my forearm. You mean the box? Yes, sir. Yes. The box full of money. Yes, sir. And then I said, give me the note. He put his hand down his coat pocket and said, I got the note. All right. Did he give you the note? Not that yet. He said, don't. He said, go ahead. He said, don't open it yet. I said, I have never betrayed a conscience. I've carried out every order of both parties the best I could. I won't open it. I'll take it up to Colonel Linder. All right. I then handed the money out. This is important in my mind. Yes, sir. Tell us what happened. I left hand forward. Yes. And I could look down at him. Yes. He was crouched near yes. the head. Stand up. And look at me if you want to do that and give me the note. That's what I you said to him. I said to him, yes, sir. and there was the box on my left arm, and I said, give me the note. He gave me the note, and I handed him the box. The box, therefore, went on his right hand, and I took the note from his left hand and put it in my pocket. Who is John? John is... Bruno Richard Huffman. All right. I just wait. Were they gone? So? Thank God I... Without your permission, I... Who 